Hello and welcome to The Television Affair. I'm Johnny and I've been trawling all over the internet to find something interesting to talk about with the history of television. Now channels come and go and I've mentioned a few on this channel before but I've been looking at some of the channels in the UK that no longer exist. Unlike the past videos, we're going to be looking at all platforms on analog and digital and satellite and cable. Some of these will have now been buried deep in your memory pillows for years and years. So, for the first one today, a very obscure one, where it's at .tv. Where It's At was a short-lived channel launching in 2001 on Sky Digital. It strived to be the voice of youth, giving young adults a say. Instead of being split up by iDents during the advert breaks, they had something like this. For me, remembering everything the morning after the night before, that's where it's at. The channel, although short-lived, featured some now well-known names in their early years. For instance, the station was launched by a very young, I just started big school looking Barney Harwood before his Blue Peter and CBBC days. His co-host in this clip is Lucy Piper, who I recognised from the S-Car Credit adverts because I'm a complete geek. Ade Adepitan made a short video for them in 2001 and some other presenters such as Nigel May, currently on Gaydio and former presenter of QVC Ideal World Create and Craft and Avago, had his own show called Mayday with co-host Lisa O'Connell. <laughs> And Rick Adams, former presenter of Nickelodeon and Big Breakfast, and since 2014, he's been a freelance presenter on the Weather Channel in America. Strangely, where it's at broadcast from Nickelodeon's old studios. Live from the heart of old London town, it's Huffman Gomez, your host, Rick Adams! I'm Rick, I'm your host, and welcome to Have Fun Go Mad. It's Friday, everybody. Yes. According to various forums, it was supposed to launch on the 12th of April, but it was pushed back to the 1st of May. It had a website which is called where it's dot at and I managed to get a few screenshots of it from the Wayback Machine because it's properly dead. The channel broadcasts for five hours a day from 4pm on Sky Channel 461 and although clearly done on a budget, the channel was extremely creatively strong and professional. Not on a live TV way either, it was really good and probably more on the pulse of reality and what was going on in the country back in 2001 and it's a mega big shame to see the way that it went. I think if it had a bit of money to complement its creativity, then it could have been really great. It's a bit like a young adult live and kicking, but like every day. Additional to the live music during the shows, there was a show called Stage Fright, and that was completely music all the way through. And strangely, the whole channel seems to have dated very well, considering that this is 2001. Now, I actually do kind of think that this kind of thing would save live television with all the closures of TV channels. Weirdly enough, it launched in a difficult time for TV because new channels were launching left, right and centre on Sky Digital. We were going through a digital boom, which also was followed by a bit of a digital bust. That was evident with ITV Digital. Now, I think Where It's At TV was ahead of its time and actually might fare well better in today's television atmosphere because a lot of TV at the moment is on demand and it's nice to have. I think when On Demand first came around, it was a nice to have. You know, oh, I can't watch the telly tonight. I'll catch up with it later. But what's happening is TV is eating its own feet and is the cause of its own demise by creating this atmosphere um, and not having linear television slash live television. Television. Now, there are plenty of on-demand services online that have the ability to do a live programme. You can even do a live stream on YouTube or Twitch or somewhere like that, and it, it works. 
because the incentive for people to watch the programme is to get involved, to be live on the programme as well. So they can send in their voice messages, they can send in texts or emails or whatever it is, uh, Discord messages, you could have a, a live Discord uh, involved with the programme. Like, it needs to be an event. Even if the event is a weekly event or even a daily event, right? Television needs to become an event an event that you're there for and if you don't get involved on that day then you're too late and there's no other option you can watch it on demand that's fine if you want to catch up with what happened that's fine but you're not going to be involved in the party you're only involved in the party if you're there anyway i think something like this nowadays especially on a live stream would be good for new music if you could get enough people interested in it then it could become a platform for people for new music a bit like a bbc introducing but for television Maybe is why you could format it a bit like... Um, do you remember when I was on about Cable 7's Despicable in episode 1? And also Chris Evans' power-up show uh, that was on BSB. I think something like that might also work in a, a station like that. Anyway, back to 2001. And from what I gather, the channel closed at some point towards the end of 2001 because in early 2002, their website had that message about um, being under destruction. It said on the website it was probably the shortest lived channel. Now, Sky Arts originally lived for eight months and then uh, BSB's channels, but Galaxy Channel lived for about nine months. So it must have been shorter than that. There has been shorter situations, which I'll go to in a bit, um, but I can't really pinpoint where the channel actually stopped broadcasting or why. According to Digital Spy forums, uh, the channel blamed the 9-11 attacks happening, but obviously as the website says they were clearly looking for funds i think both is plausible it was clearly a low budget operation and probably didn't have any backups or procedures for major events or obit procedures at that point but i don't know because actually a lot of the channel looked quite professional i'm not sure how it works with television but definitely in the early 2000s if you're a radio station you were probably signed up to either sky news or um independent radio news irn and they would take over for you um if like say a big event happened a big incident uh, they would be able to um to give rolling news on that situation shockingly oh, five years later in april 2007 there was talks of a return with a website update and also talks of it being a place for new filmmakers being its selling point but nothing came of it and by then everyone had forgotten about it anyway the second channel well network really select tv select tv select tv select tv select tv select tv Cut. that's enough select tv select tv launched actually before 1997 which means that it should have been in a previous video as it was on analog but it slipped through the net so it's tough they've spelt select tv with one t that's just lazy i'd have offered you another t if you really needed it i'd offer some space as well for it but if you can't be asked then i can't be asked now originally it was launched by a production company of the same name so they were mega creative about it and they'd been producing shows for a fair few years funnily enough to make a tv channel which they launched in 1995 and in 1996 select tv production company got sold to pearson like live tv owned by the mirror group they were only on cable but unlike live tv it didn't make you feel like you were about to have some sort of hemorrhage or a seizure in 1997 it was rebranded to carlton select and it became the flagship for what was coming Digital TV was coming in 1997 and the main broadcasters were feeling sexy for it because at one point not only did Carlton Television have the ITV franchise for London but it was buying up shares in the other franchises most notably changing up Central. It already owned Central partially since 1987 and then it had tried to purchase Thames before actually killing it via the franchise win. They upped their stake in Central, bought HTV and West Country, along with some rights to the Rank Library, ATV's Library and the ITC Entertainment Library. Carlton's ITV sister, rival, counterpart, whatever it was, Granada, it was doing the same thing and as we've already mentioned in this uh, series, that Granada and Sky had launched their own channels, so it made sense for Carlton to do, well, something. 
So they went over to the Channel Islands and they set fire to Channel Television. Uh, that gave them something to talk about. And then they picked off every channel that they didn't own and they kidnapped all of the kids and the elderly parents of the people that worked for them. And I need to tell you a secret, that didn't happen. In 1997, Carlton was in partnership with B Sky B and Granada to form a new digital network that you could pick up by terrestrial means. This would end up as the on digital bid, but they would only get the license if Sky buggered off. So Sky had to remain as a rival. They started by a great move, moving into Marco Polo House. Now that should have been a red flag in the first place, considering its previous occupiers. It was them lot, by the way. Now I also hear a red flag is that the doors in Marco Polo House used to open outwards, and apparently it was one of the only places in the British Isles to do so. Well, that may have been the case until Cineworld Gloucester Keys opened. We'll go into the specifics of On Digital and ITV Digital another day, but this all meant that On Digital needed some channels. So the owners of Carlton Select created some sister channels. Carlton World was a factual and entertainment channel launching in 1998 and it closed in February 2000 due to poor ratings. Carlton Kids launched in 1998 and it was a kids channel airing some old CITV shows and even a couple of CBBC shows like Biker Grove. Now many would see this as the forerunner to the CITV channel but that wouldn't happen until 2006. Carlton Kids closed in January 2000, also due to poor ratings. Bear in mind, On Digital was having issues trying to get people to sign up in the first place and then it was only available via On Digital or some cable networks. The Carlton Food Network launched in September 1996 on cable and it shared space with Carlton Select. It was renamed to Taste CFN in May 2001 and it closed in December 2001. A few weeks before that closed, UK Food from the UK TV network had launched and it would end up taking up CFN's shows, including some originally produced shows for CFN. The Last in the Gang to Die was Carlton Cinema. It was a movie channel and in November 1998 it was aired via On Digital and then moved to cable. It closed in March 2003. The Carlton name had already left our screens by that point and the merger with Granada to form ITV PLC had taken place and it didn't survive through the collapse of ITV Digital. What probably didn't help Carlton select was the launch of ITV2 in 1998. On the 1st of March 2000, Carlton Select was closed and it would never be seen ever again. It wouldn't be the last time we see an ITV associated channel called Select, but we'll go on to that on the next episode. Now a fun fact for you is that the company that was originally called Granada Sky Broadcasting still exists, kind of. It owns ITVs 2, 3, 4, ITVB and until recently CITV. It's no longer called Granada Sky Broadcasting because ITV bought Sky's share in 2004, shortly after Men and Motors closed, and now it's called ITV Digital Channels. They own the next channel that we're going to be looking into today, and it's called Merit. Merit was part of ITV, although you wouldn't know it. It launched in July 2020 in the height of the pandemic and things didn't go well from the start because the channel was delayed by nearly a month. It also broadcast only for three hours on the old ITV3 Plus Freeview channel. It was apparently a lifestyle channel but it didn't have any original content and it also didn't have adverts. Now the Freeview license was then sold to Sky in August 2020 and less than a month after it launched it closed in September 2020. Merit lasted one month and 19 days and that's got to be the shortest lived channel I've covered, if not the shortest lived channel that existed in the UK. The channel was used in a reshuffle involving Pick to add Sky Arts to Freeview. And then that was it, never heard of ever again. So there you go. In the next episode, we'll have more defunct stations and I'll be looking at the ITV Digital Network along with another short lived ITV channel and a channel that lost its license.
That's it from me for today's video. If you liked it, press like, share it, comment, subscribe, and all do whatever. Uh, now, you can support the channel by becoming a supporter, team member, or executive producer. Press join to find out how. Today's executive producer was Computer Tom. Thanks for watching. I've been Johnny Robinson, and I'll still be Johnny Robinson after this video's finished. Thank you, bye.